I'm Gold Derby editor Daniel Montgomery here with the uh, top chef Houston finalists, Evelyn Garcia, Buddha Lowe, and Sarah Welch. Uh, now we're recording this two days before the finale airs and the winner is revealed. Uh, but to start uh, at the beginning, what did the three of you think of Houston as the culinary location for the season? Uh, Evelyn, uh, of course, you're a Houston native, so Amazing. let's uh, start with you. <laughs> no, it was great. I mean, obviously, I had no idea it was going to be filmed in Houston until right before, but um, I mean, it's amazing. I think it's a huge platform for the city. And, you know, I feel like it was a great um, showcase of Houston. I think a lot of people saw a lot of Houston that they didn't know about. And I'm so happy that we were able to showcase that um, as, you know, we're, we're a huge city <laughs> in Texas, but it's, there's just so much here. And, and I'm so happy we were able to showcase that. Buddha, how about you? Yeah, I loved Houston. I, uh, from the moment that we got told that we're going to go to Houston, I didn't know anything about it. But within 10 minutes, my eyes just almost pulled out of my head, just like reading all these like things that I didn't even know. Like automatically, the first thing you study is like, okay, what's the signature dish of Houston? Because you know that's going to be a challenge. It's like, well, it actually didn't actually end up being a challenge. It was actually far. And I was like, whoa, I didn't exactly think that far was going to be the signature dish of Houston. And then um, I grew up in Australia and we are like a very um, multicultural style country. And to know that we're gonna be cooking in the most diverse city in the whole of the United States, it was super exciting. I just, this is the sort of stuff that I like. I, I, I can't really hold myself to like one cuisine. I just get too excited about multiple cuisines. So um, I was definitely excited that it was in Houston this year. Sarah? I was super excited about Houston. I was also met with like a little bit of like frustration or concern over kind of like the women's reproductive rights um, issues that they were tackling at the time. Um, and I think that a lot of people kind of felt that way. And so I guess my excitement and like interest was metered a little bit by just like that aspect of um, kind of going to Houston. But once I got to dive into researching it, I, I got really excited in it um, because it's not like zoned. The fact that all of the culinary is mixed into residential, I felt like it was super interesting to see the sprawl of it um, and how, how vast it was. Um, and then, yeah, being there, uh, we had like a really great in with Evelyn because we ate a lot of takeout and the takeout was just really excellent. So. Um, I think what we got to taste of it, you know, in the sheltered way that we did was really exceptional as well. Uh, and, you know, Sarah and Buddha, you both mentioned, uh, you know, doing research uh, before, uh, you know, when you, when you found out you're, you're uh, be cooking in, in Houston, how much of that do you do before, uh, you know, the season starts and like, what, what's the degree to your preparation, uh, Sarah? Uh, I don't think I did anywhere near as much maybe as Buddha, um, just in, you know, in hindsight, maybe I, I should have done more. Um, I think that I researched the show more than I researched in itself. Um, because I mean, and, and we kind of experienced this when we were in filming, we would try and guess what the challenges were. We were just like, never right. Like ever. So I think that like, you can study as much as you want. Um, but what they're actually going to throw at you is very, very different. I think studying the pantry um, more than anything, like the indigenous ingredients, and then also like studying the whole foods that you would have access to were kind of the two things that I put some time into. Um, and then, yeah, studying the show a bit, like watching the last season of it. Buddha? Yeah, so um, I had a lot of time on my hands because I actually had to go back to Australia and we had to do hotel quarantine. Um, and that was two weeks. And I knew that I was getting close to being accepted onto the show. So I thought, what the hell? Like, I would just, I watched, what? uh, I watched <laughs> five seasons back to back in two weeks. And, um, you know, yeah, there was quite a bit of studying in it, but I also enjoy watching it. Um, you know, pen and paper, um, I wrote down challenges, I wrote down, um what was successful what wasn't successful i just um you know i think that that approach to it definitely helps out but 
at the end of the day, you still need a cook. <laughs> so if you, as, as tactical and the studying is, it's either you can cook or you can't. But um, I, I think you can learn a lot from just even watching a episode of Top Chef. So uh, to watch multiple, um, I actually didn't watch past season 10 just because I didn't feel like anything they were doing uh, like nine years ago was relevant to what we will be doing now because the show's came a long way. And uh, Evelyn, of course, you knew a lot about Houston, but uh, did you study the show? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I am a fan of the show, so I had watched a lot of um, seasons. Um, I did, you know, as as Buddha, we were like, okay, we're getting pretty close. Maybe I should start refreshing. <laughs> like, let me refresh it up. Yeah. Um, so I definitely started watching some some episodes, and yeah, I mean, it was really just trying to enjoy it and, and coming from a place of like, okay, you know, like, what would I do? Like, just trying to like help my brain out and see like what, you know, what I would do in those moments. Um, because at the end of the day, yeah, you go in there, you're like, I don't, you don't know what they're going to throw at you. Yeah. yeah. You're just the muscle, like get, get in the mindset, I think. Yeah. People are like, oh, did you train? Did I'm like, what am I going to, what, like, what am I going to do? I don't know. You just <laughs> Fast. yeah like yeah like did I would I known that I had to practice biscuits before I would go in not really but oh, yeah. definitely not me maybe, maybe we <laughs> needed that one but you know it was just just trying to enjoy the show see see what worked what didn't work um and then honestly it's all relying on your experience as a cook um there's there's nothing else that can really help you out there uh, you just need to know. Have enough experience, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, if I would have, no. They actually reached out, like, um, and I was 24, 25 or something. And I was like, oh, I'm not ready. I was like, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I have so much more to learn. Um, yeah. But now this time around, you know, I feel a bit more comfortable, for sure. Uh, the, the challenges are so varied on the show from week to week, uh, as, as you guys mentioned. Uh, you know, what were uh, each of your favorites? Uh, Sarah, you can include Last Chance Kitchen, though I'm not sure those would qualify as anyone's favorites necessarily. Uh, what, what was your favorite? I, I'll pick one from each if that's okay. I loved Restaurant Wars because um, in Last Chance, we had to make three dishes in 45 minutes, but mm -hmm. we actually make nine dishes just for production sake. So making nine dishes from scratch in 45 minutes is one of the harder things I've ever done in my life. Um, and it made everything else seem possible. So that led into my second favorite, which was the fish competition where everybody was like freaking out about making two dishes in two hours. And I was like, well, mathematically I've already done that. So I know it's possible. And so I didn't allow myself the concern of the time constraint. Cause I was like, I've done something harder than this already. So I think that gave me like confidence to then get to my actual favorite, which was the first one. Buddha? It's you. Oh, is that me? Yeah. Oh, so, sorry, I cut out when when it said my name. Um, my favorite uh, my favorite episode was Restaurant Wars. I just I love it. I've watched it so many times. Um, you know, it's always the most anticipated um episode of of the season, and you can see why there's so much uh put into the production. Um, in our in our careers, uh, uh, opening up a restaurant with a concept within 37 hours, I mean 38 hours or however, however long we had, um, it's not real. It's not real. It's not realistic. You cannot do that. And no matter how much you study, you don't know who's going to be on your team. And I can easily say if there's one person that wasn't on that team that wasn't from the original matriarch, matriarch would not have exist. Matriarch would be a complete different concept. So you would have to do. Uh, so it's, a, it's such an interesting challenge. And I think that um, I really, I really love doing it because I got to use a little bit more of a skill that you don't really see me do um, throughout the normal challenges. Evelyn? Okay. <laughs> I was like, favorite. Um, I think I'll say the Selena challenge. Um, that was definitely one of my favorites. Uh, I think it was just straight luck pulling out the Selena knife. Okay. 
I was like, did anybody? I was like, what? Um, so that was really amazing. And I think uh, it was just, it was just awesome to be able, like as growing up, being a fan of Selena and then being able to like be, create something so connected to her. Just, I don't think I've ever thought that I'd be that close, like meeting her sister and, and, and just being that close to, to someone I looked up to young, when I was so young. And I still do. I mean, she's, she was amazing. Um, I think that was just like, it was just mind blowing <laughs> and so lucky. And, uh, and going into this uh, last challenge, which is about to air the finale, um, without going into specifics, obviously, uh, I'm wondering what, what you guys thought of what that challenge ended up being uh, when, when you found out, uh, Buddha? Um, the, when they released the challenge for the finale, you mean the next episode? The next episode? Yeah, the, the, the finale um, episode. Yeah, no spoilers. Well, well you know, they always say, um, and I remember a specific episode where they were always complaining, there was a chef complaining about, oh, you know, um, you know, I wanted to cook what I wanted to cook. And Tom goes to him, you can't cook what you want to cook. You got to cook for the challenge. And he's like, there's only one time that you can cook whatever you want. And that's in the finale. And I was like, okay, that's, that's, that's what's guaranteed. So what what you what yeah what you what what we have to do is cook the best meal of your life, and that's what every single time, any time, well, up to now is any been any finale is to cook a progressive meal, um, for a table of judges or if not a restaurant or if not if you're Kristen Kish's season which was ridiculous 150 people live, um, progressive meal. Um, but you get to choose, you get to cook your food. And so the, the having the ability to cook your own food at the end with no restrictions was kind of like, um, was, I'm, I'm from Australia. I don't cook. I, I'm very new to America. So having to cook things like that are distinctively American is very hard for me. So it's very hard to get through these sort of challenges, especially not having grown up with the food or ingredients. Um, but if you make it to the end, you get to cook whatever you want. So um, I just wanted to get that opportunity to cook whatever I want uh, for once. Evelyn? Um, what was the question? <laughs> uh, I was just wondering uh, how you felt uh, about that last challenge. The very the last finale. One. Yeah, the, the finale. I mean, it was just exciting, obviously, for me throughout the competition. It's just like, you've got to... You got to make it through. You got to make it through to the finale. That is our goal. Just go to the finale. And, and, you know, to get to that point, I mean, it's absolutely exciting. It's taunting. <laughs> You're like, oh shit, I did it. Okay. <laughs> now what? Um, so I think, I mean, overall it was just excitement. Obviously we were all expecting a, a progressive uh, course meal. Um, and really just trying to pull from her experience in the competition, personal experience, and at the end of the day, try to cook the, the best meal at this time in the competition. And I think that that, that was, that was the, the feeling. It was just like exciting, but also scary. <laughs> Sarah? I think for me, like I probably more than anybody else kind of got to cook whatever I want because a lot of last chance is just like, make this. I mean, at one point Tom was like to get back into the competition, he was like, make whatever dish you want. So I did a lot more of that than anybody else did. And, um, going into the finale, I kind of knew what would happen. Um, but I, um, my fiance had COVID, <laughs> um, and we run three restaurants as a team. So I spent a lot of time not thinking about the competition and just kind of like dealing with real life, um, which made, getting excited for the finale really hard because, you know, you forget that, you know, all of us were in this bubble of Top Chef um, and, you know, in between the finale, they let you go home. And for a lot of people, that's really great. Um, for me, it was just agonizing. So um, like, I was so excited to hear what the challenge was. And then um, it was, you know, I think being in Tucson was a new environment for all of us. Right. And so that was fun too, to have this like, essentially this entire new pantry to work with. Um, totally new inspiration. I'm sure for Evelyn, that was like cool, right? Cause she got to like get out of Houston. I think all of us were really excited to be cooking in Tucson um, for the finale. 
Uh, and uh, one last question. I'm wondering, uh, you know, now that the Top Chef experience uh, for you guys is over as contestants, uh, is there something you'll you'll particularly miss about it, uh, Evelyn? Um, I mean, we didn't have to deal with real life, <laughs> right? Like we were we were in this bubble, and and all we had to think about was cooking, and and that was, although it was very extreme, it was also very nice. I know. I mean, I personally own a business, and there's a thousand things I have to deal with every day. Um, so there was something like nice about that of just like, well, I just have to think about cooking, <laughs> and nothing else was a problem. Which is like, who knew what was going outside in the world? Totally. Sarah? Uh, yeah, I mean, for me, same as Evelyn, honestly, like there are very few times in, it was like summer camp. Um, I, I think as a business owner, you always think of like, man, I wonder what it would be like, to, like not have to stress about my business for one minute. Right. Um, I got two months. Um, that did mean that like every that and so it genuinely was like a get out of jail free card for my businesses which after COVID when you eat sleep and breathe them and if you're lucky they survive like it was a hiatus that um I think allowed me a little bit of vigor going back into it and Buddha yeah um looking back at it and even like we've got two more days left I'm gonna miss everything from the moment that we did our first quick part to um even up to now this it's exciting i think that when you see people in the street and they notice you they're like you know did, you know what happened what happened what happened and finally that question is going to be over yeah yes it was annoying at some times but <laughs> it's also it's also fun because they, they, they you get to see the excitement on people's faces you know um obviously we all know what happens but we we i i admire that they get that bit of enjoyment and excitement. So it's, I loved everything as a whole. Um, if I could do it again, I would 100% do it again. I loved all of it. Um, just like Evelyn said, and Sarah said, we don't get these opportunities where we just rock up and cook. You have to like promote that shit on IG. You got to sell tickets. You got to order, cook, and then to ha walk into a set where all the produce is there, cook what you want. Um, Cook, cook according to this challenge, um, learn different experiences, different cultures, uh, get, get removed from the outside world. You know, I don't think there'll be a time where I'll ever have my phone taken away from me for yeah. two, two months in my whole life. And just being able to go, well, what was life without, without technology before, without phones? And we got to experience that, you know, again, uh, forcefully, but nowadays, you, there's no way that you cannot live without it. Um, so that was a very interesting experience to relive again. Well, I want to congratulate all three of you for uh, making the finals, all the uh, delicious looking food. Of course, I couldn't taste it um, uh, that, that you made uh, during the season. And I look forward to finding out uh, who wins. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking with all three of you. Thank you so much. Great meeting you, Daniel. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Thank Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you.